Welcome to another Maintenance Monday. This week, we are gonna be focusing on how to change your brake pads or brake blocks as they can otherwise be known. We'll also talk you through a few setup tips and help you identify when your pads actually need replacing as well. If you're currently riding your bike a lot in the wet, wintry weather, or you have lots of steep descents where you live, or you're commuting on it daily, you're gonna to need to check your pads for wear more regularly than if you're just riding in the warm sunshine. That seems like a distant memory, doesn't it? At this point, you're gonna to need to establish exactly what sort of pad you have. Do you have a brake block where the pad is integrated into the mounting system, or do you have a cartridge pad? If you have a brake block, we'll first address how you change that. To gain easier access to your pad, I would first always recommend removing the wheel. You're likely to have some sort of quick release which will open the caliper up. Simply undo your quick release and remove the wheel. You're gonna do the front one just because it's that little bit easier. Now, first off, we're gonna focus on the brake blocks, the one piece item. Traditionally, these will be removed with either an Allen key or as this one is with a spanner, an eight mil spanner in this case. These would be mounted on the side of your pad just like the cartridge pads and they have the adjustability built into the collar and the washer system. So be careful that these washers are reapplied in exactly the same order as they're removed. You may find it easier to take pictures of this whilst you're doing that, or keep the instructions to hand from the new set that you've just purchased. To help you decide if you need to replace your pads or not, you should remove them from the bike and have a good thorough look over them. The pad should have a good couple of millimeters left for water drainage, a couple of millimeters of grooving that is, and you should also check that there aren't any small stones seated and embedded into the pad or little bits of aluminium, as this will seriously eat away at your wheels and cause faster wear to your rims. Most pads will come with a wear indicator built into them somewhere, and if you're not happy with how your pads are, then it's definitely time to replace them. Now remounting these is simply the reverse of removing them in the first place and it's very easy to do so but the most important thing to remember is to keep the washers in exactly the same order as these will help position the pad against the rim and that will help increase, decrease and alter your braking performance. So what if, like me, you don't have a brake block like this one? Well, then there's a chance you're gonna have one of these cartridge pads, in which case the removal is actually that little bit easier because the pad will remain adjusted in the rim because it's mounted separately from the cartridge. Simply find an Allen key of the correct size, now be really careful because these do often have a tendency to round off, and unwind it ever so slightly, leaving the little grub screw in there, and you should be able to just pop the pad out quite easily just like that. Once you've removed the pad from the bike, it's gonna be a lot easier to see just how far the pad is away from the wear indicator. Now this is the carbon fiber brake pad from Zip, and that's because I'm using carbon wheels. These don't wear quite as quickly as an aluminum brake pad do, probably because of the lack of friction that's used in the braking forces. Now I've removed this one from the bike. It doesn't actually need replacing because it's fairly new. So I'm just gonna repeat the process and slide it back in to the pad from behind. Then simply finger tighten the grub screw back up with the Allen key. It's a two mil Allen key on this one. Each system's gonna be slightly different, but they're generally two to three millimeters at maximum. I'm gonna do the same on the other side then and repeat the process. Check the health of the pad, check there are no stones or little bits of shrapnel lodged into it. And as you can see, it really is very, very easy. Yep, that one looks good as well. Retighten that grub screw. Imagine that was a set of brand new pads and you're done. The only thing now we need to do is check over the rim, check that there's nothing worn on there, check that that looks like it's in good condition and it's not causing the brake pads any problems, and then check the alignment of the pads on the rims. So there's one more thing to add about these cartridge pads, and that is because of the direction of the wheel, it's constantly spinning that way through the forks, you don't really need to worry about these grub screws too much. You don't need to over tighten them. All they're doing is just sitting there and they come with a little bit of Loctite or something similar on the threads already. So the chance of them actually coming out is incredibly small. In some cases, I've seen riders ride without these in the past. I wouldn't advise it because if you roll backwards and put your brakes on, the pads will fall out. But in normal use, you'll be absolutely fine. Now it's time to reintroduce the wheel. Make sure the quick release is still open in your front caliper. Clamp it up. I'd normally do this on the floor just to make sure the wheel sits correctly in the dropouts. Close the quick release up. Now, if you've replaced your pads, you may find that you need to undo this and allow a little bit of cable to slip through. But because my pads are the same as before, it's absolutely fine. Now, this is the point where you may need to make some adjustments to the toe in or the toe out of your pad, or maybe even adjust the angle. If your pads have been in there a while and they're worn right down almost to the cartridge, you're probably gonna need to adjust them quite a lot, especially if you'd stayed on top of that adjustment before. 
Now what you'd have to do is get a four mil Allen key on this one, unscrew it, and the best way to adjust them is actually to hold the caliper on or pull the brake lever gently whilst making those minor adjustments in there. If you are making adjustments to this, the best way I find to do this is to pull the brake lever on quite hard, unscrew this bolt, and then when it comes to setting it up, it's best to put a little piece of card in at the back of the pad as that will allow you a little bit of toe in, which will help with modulation and also with correct braking performance. So a credit card or something similar, I'm, I'm using my driving license. Make sure the pad hits the rim nice and squarely so it's following the same sort of curvature of the wheel. Put it right in the middle of the braking area and then simply squeeze the lever hard and tighten it up. Do this on both sides and you'll have perfect braking performance all the time. The next thing to do is to make sure your brake pads are hitting the rim squarely. That means they're both hitting at exactly the same time. That way you get that nice satisfying pounding noise on the rim. These are dual pivot calipers and because of that they have this little adjustment screw on the side which will help angle the caliper from one side to the next. You'll quickly see by screwing it one way you're skewing the action of the caliper and by unwinding it and screwing it the other way you're reversing that procedure. Put it right in the middle and you'll have perfect braking performance with that really satisfying sound I mentioned before. You'll also have a lighter lever action and more consistent braking. Now the final step, once you're really happy, is to make sure that everything is nice and tight. You've used these concave washers to make the adjustment for the toe in and the toe out, and also you've made sure that everything is aligned with the rim and the braking surface is being met right in the middle. Then squeeze the caliper, make sure they are nice and tight. There will be a recommended torque setting, but you can also do that on feel. But the most important one to get tight is indeed the cable, as ultimately if that slips, you're gonna be in a spot of bother. And I'm pretty happy with that, I'm looking forward to testing it out. So there you have it. It really is quite simple to replace the brake pads or the brake blocks on your bike. Just remember, reverse the steps that you took to remove the pads from your bike when it comes to remounting them and then absolutely nail that fine tuning at the end as that really is what's gonna improve your braking performance. If you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, do give it a thumbs up. And for more Maintenance Mondays, click just down there.